Okay, so Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh once again. Um, today we are going to start, or we are going to continue whatever we have started in the last uh, two classes. Um, in the previous classes, we have talked about an introduction to project management. Um, we have roughly talked about the tentative assessment reference book that you are supposed to be taking or you are you, you are supposed to be studying from and then we have taken uh, some interactive example which is related to uh, explaining some fundamentals of project management um, furthermore we have taken project attributes and we discussed them we have taken project constraints in the first session and then later on, we followed that by defining what is a project, discussing some of the project management knowledge areas. And then today we are going to continue uh, the remaining project management knowledge areas. Uh, I think we have reached to uh, reach to risk management. Can you correct me if I'm wrong? And we have stopped at risk management, right? Yes, sir. We had an example, but we didn't uh, go to the summary of risk management. OK. OK, so once again, um, the summary. That you need to always give yourself a gap. As your performance is not going to be consistent. OK, this is only one side of risk. Uh, and as I said last class, we are going to have uh, a detailed talk about risk management in the in chapter number two. Okay. The the next knowledge area is procurement management. Okay. What is what is procurement? Anybody? What is the meaning of procurement? Anybody knows? What is the meaning of procure? I have no idea. Okay. What is the meaning of procure? Uh, insurance? Insurance? No. Procure is something different. No, insurance is different. Procure is different. Procure is more into purchasing, okay? Buying and selling. When I say procurement, it is about buying and selling. Are we okay? Procurement is about buying and selling. And when I say to procure, means to buy, to purchase, okay? Are we okay with that? Is it clear now what's the meaning of procurement? Are we clear about the meaning of procurement? Okay. Let us let us see here. So once again, it says for you, it is about getting, purchasing goods. Goods means things, services from vendors, contractors, and others. Vendors are the suppliers. Okay. Vendors are the suppliers. OK, so once again, getting, purchasing goods, services can be a, it can be an item. It can be a service from vendors, contractors and others, different, different people I can get from them. OK. So let's say let's say that we have a task which is purchasing cement for the construction. So I have I have a construction site and I want to purchase cement. OK, I want to purchase cement. Now, there are two companies, let's say two companies. And in these two companies, we have procurement engineer. OK, there is a procurement engineer, procurement engineer one and then procurement engineer two. The engineer number one. OK. He is having these supplies from the supplier. OK. So he has only one supplier, which is Oman Cement. 
component. Engineer number two, he has a supplier. I mean, he has different suppliers like Bioneer Cement, Raisut Cement, and then Oman Cement. And then furthermore, he has in his database, he has different types of cement from the different companies. Okay. Now, which one, which one would be better? A person who is having in his database one company only or a person who has different companies and different uh, and different options. Which one would be better? Wh why why would engineer number two be better? Why would engineer two be better? Because uh, he has a different option. So I can choose the best best for me as a or uh, regarding to my requirements. Okay, so how, how did you know that the first company or the that single company is not having your requirement? Good I answer, mean the, op the, op the options range will be more. Okay, the options are going to be more. So once again, uh, just to elaborate, your answer is correct, but just to elaborate and to give a clear view about it. Having many options, first thing will ensure for you a lesser price. Second thing is going to be uh, ensuring for you um, that if something happened with the first supplier, you will not have a problem in waiting the supplier, but rather than that, you can get the supply from somebody else. Okay, now, how that is going to be helping you so, for example, if I have already a database, if I have a database of these companies whom are having the cement, then if I have a problem with one of the suppliers that he, that he couldn't deliver for me the cement, I don't need to go and search for the companies who are doing or who are manufacturing cement or selling cement because already I have the list with me. So I'm already saving time in terms of procurement. Okay. Once again, it is very important when it comes to project management that you have proper procurement management, a proper database. So once once you are going to purchase anything, already you have the list of companies, what are the items provided by each company, and then what are the rough prices given by the company. That will make the purchasing and the supply chain to be a little bit easier. Are we okay? Is it clear about procurement management? Okay. And then we have stakeholder. Okay, and then we have stakeholder. What is the meaning of stakeholder? What is the meaning of stakeholder, anybody? Uh, I think the people who will own some share of the company. Okay. Some person. Okay. Any other person? Whatever you have referred to is shareholder. Shareholder is a person who owns a share. Stakeholder is a person who is either affecting own project or getting affected by your project. Can can you elaborate, Jawahar? Can you give me an example? Once again, we said no to memorizing. If you started to memorize in this course, you will be tired because there is uh, there are a lot of things in the course. A person with an interest or concern to something. Okay. 
the closest the closest answer is whatever Jawahar has said. Okay, the closest is what whatever Jawahar has said. Um, okay, so once again, stakeholder is any person who might affect your project negatively or positively, or whom will be affected by the project. Once again, positively or negatively. Okay, so any person who is uh, within the circle of the project is considered to be a stakeholder. Okay. Excuse me, Mister. Yeah. It can't be uh, like a company or a ministry. Com company. Um, it it depends. It depends on the project. It depends on the project. So, for example, uh, let us say, uh, let us say the college or your your university, University of Technology and Applied Sciences. Can you tell me who are the stakeholders? Whom will be affected if anything has happened to the university? Who will be affected? The students. Okay, students. And, uh, teachers, lecturers. Okay, so students, lecturers. People who are working in the college, like cleaners, who can affect. Also, can, can also Ministry of Education can. Okay, Ministry, affect. Ministry of Education, if it's related. Although the Ministry of Education is not a big, for example, contributor, but since Ministry of Education is giving the students or sending the students to the college, they might be considered as a stakeholder. So once again. Stakeholder is any person who might be affecting or who might get affected. Okay. Once again, who might affect or who might get affected. And we'll see the example here. And once again, for the stakeholder management, we are going to go in detail uh, in the next chapter. Okay. So the example set here that we are going to establish a coffee shop. And then we have two businessmen. Businessman number one and then businessman number two. Okay, so business num businessman number one, he has considered one stakeholder or the first stakeholder he considered is landlord. Landlord is the person who owns the land. Okay, the person whom he will pay the rent for. Landlord is the person who owns that land. Okay, and then his second. Uh, his second stakeholders were the employees, the workers with him. So he had two stakeholders. Okay. So he studied about the rent and the landlord. He studied about the requirements of the employees. And then we have another businessman. He studied about the landlord. He studied about the employees. He studied about the customers. He studied about the competitors which are available, sponsors, possible sponsors, suppliers. Now, which one you think his business is going to be more successful? The person who is having less people, less people studied, or the person who has studied more people involved or more people related to his business? Second one eventually. Why? Why? Why is it important to study the customers? Why is it important to study the competitors? Sponsors, suppliers. Because if you have studied the customers, you will know what they want. If you didn't study them, you might be losing your, your business soon. If you didn't study your competitors and so what have they done for the business, then you will never grow and at the end you will close up your shop. If you didn't have any or you didn't study the possibilities of having sponsors, you, you might be affected like the, in the current situation of Corona if you don't have any backup helping you. Same for the suppliers. Okay, so once again, as many 
stakeholders you will have in your project as much you will be successful okay once again increasing stakeholders if you keep studying uh, the people who are getting affected the people who will be affecting your project then you are making the chances of making your project more successful higher are we clear are we clear about stakeholders okay and once again you said we are going to yes anybody okay and once again differentiate between stakeholder and shareholder stakeholder is anybody who will affect my project and who might be affected by the project okay a cleaner in the college might might be affected and he might affect the college if he didn't clean the place is going to be dirty so he has affected if he is not getting his salary then he might be affected okay Sh- shareholder is a person who owns okay so once again shareholder is a person who owns a percentage stakeholder is either a person who affects or who gets affected so when i say stakeholder then one of the stakeholders is the shareholder shareholder is one of the stakeholders okay shareholder is one of the stakeholders the last thing is integration what is the meaning of integration integration management integration management what is the meaning of integration anybody what is the meaning of to in- integrate maybe to complete okay okay in- integrate since a lot of you have studied uh, differentiation and integration integrate is to sum up okay to combine okay to combine to sum up to add or to complete as well you are seeing the bigger picture okay so once again integration management here relates to all of the other nine knowledge areas now can i can i say that only i take scope management and leave the other areas or can i take schedule management and ignore the other areas or i say okay cost is more important and then i leave the others or are they all connected to each other okay now here you see that all of them are actually connected okay in a way or another way in a way or or another you will see that all of them are connected to each other okay the last one is integration management where it's the area where you are trying to integrate things together okay you are trying to you are trying to combine and integrate things together and we are going to study something later called the project charter and it is going to be the basis of integration and we are, we are going to learn about it in the upcoming chapter so once again there are 10 knowledge areas any project management should know about okay so the should, the project management should know what to do that's related to school he should know how to properly estimate the periods and time he should know how to manage and estimate the cost he should know how to stick to the quality he should know how to put the people uh, to the correct position and not to overload them he should make sure that the communication is going in the correct flow he should make sure that the risks are controlled and positive risks are increased he should 
make sure that uh, a very good database in terms of procurement is available. He should study all the stakeholders and eventually he should combine all of these to come up with uh, a successful project. Okay, so once again, all of these are the areas a project management, I mean, a project manager should know about. And later on, we are going to have chapters. Um, we are going to take a couple of these knowledge areas as full chapters. Okay, and we are going to study them in, in, in detail. Now, any question about the, any, uh, any question about any of the knowledge area that is still not clear for you? If things are clear, then I'll jump to the next slide. Okay. Very good. Now we are going for project management. Okay, we are going to for project management. Okay, now we need to define what is a project. We need to define what is project management. And then we'll go to the project manager. Okay, first we need to define project management. We have defined project. And we said project is a series of tasks, right? If you remember, we said uh, project is a series of tasks which are temporary and has been done to create a unique service or a result, if you remember. Okay, now if we want to talk about project management, properly managing your project, then we can say we have the knowledge area that we studied about. We have the tools. Okay, so it says for you the proper definition of uh, of project management that we are going to apply knowledge. We are going to apply skills, tools, and techniques to project activities. Okay, or the tasks. To meet the project requirement. Okay, so once again, we have some knowledge, we have some materials, some tools, okay, and we have certain constraints or certain requirements at the end. So, to define properly project management, I'm going to use whatever knowledge that I'm having in terms of project management. I'm going to use the available tools and techniques in the project uh, activities to meet whatever constraints are there. Okay, so once again, we have three things. We have the tools and the knowledge. These are the input. And then I have the tasks. And then finally, I have the, the output should, which should not be exceeded. Are we okay with the definition? Is it clear for you? Is it clear for you? Okay, so once again, I'm going to use the knowledge, I'm going to use the tools to my activities, whatever is the nature of the project, to meet the requirements of the project. That is the meaning of project management. Okay. And once again, you should not Memorize. I don't bring definitions, but you should not memorize anyhow. Okay. Project manager. Okay. We're going to talk about project manager. Do you remember when, when I have talked to you about the... Do you remember when I have given you this example? And I have told you that you need to create four to five members. And I told you that you have a time, you have a budget. And I have stated clearly that if this would have been a physical class, then I would have asked you to choose one leader. Okay, to choose one leader. Now, can you tell me on what basis you are going to choose a leader? Let's say that you are four to five members. On what basis you are going to say that person A or person B or person C or person D should be a leader? in your group okay or if you are having or if you are having a group of uh, i mean if you are having an assignment 
or if you are having your project in the college, you should have a leader. On what basis you have chosen your leader? Vote is a method. Vote is a method of choosing. Vote is a method of choosing. It is not about what criteria you have you have chosen to select. Okay. Can you can you define can you define knowledge? How did you measure knowledge? How did you measure skills? What type of skills? Experience. All of you are all all of you are colleagues in the same level. So how did you come up with the experience? Okay, so already some of you have mentioned good points. Let us see. Let us see here. Okay. The first thing before going and talking about what are the reasons, uh, for if we want to define, if we want to define a project manager, if somebody asks you, what is the definition or what is the project, what is the meaning of a project manager? Um, then this is simply going to be the answer. Now, the person who is, I mean, art, art is the science. The person who is making the art, we call it as an artist. Okay. Writing is a science or an, is an action. Okay. And the person who is writing it is going to be a writer. Project management is a science. The person who is doing a project management is called, is called to be a project manager. So if you remember, if we have defined uh, project management as the tools and techniques used in the project activities to meet up with the requirements, then I'll just add, okay, and I'll just add that the person who is doing the process of using the knowledge and the tools to the project activities to meet up uh, the project requirement is known as a project manager. So once again, project management is a process. The person who is doing it is a project manager. Okay, that's the definition of a project manager. There are certain skills. Okay, there are certain skills. Normally, a project manager would be uh, would be would be known of. You have mentioned some of them already. Okay, the first thing. First thing is team building. Okay, the first thing is team building. Now, if you have been asked that you are a project manager, okay, if you have been asked that you are going to be a project manager of this particular, uh, this particular project, in what basis you are going to choose your uh, your members are going to. Are, are you going to choose them because you are, I mean, because they are your friends? On what basis you are going to choose your members? If you have been assigned, I have, I, I came to you, okay. I came to you in the class. I said, person A, person B, person C, person D, you are the leaders of four groups. Okay, and I want you to choose four members for each group. You need to choose four members for your group. I have told you that you need to submit for me a report. You need to uh, present a presentation for me. And uh, you need to make for me a time plan, for example. Will you go and choose your your friends or would you choose a person who is good in speaking because you require him for the for the presentation 
and you would choose a person who is good at writing because you require him for writing the report and a person who is good at time management because you require a person who will do the time which person would you prefer a person who knows what to be done or a person who will choose his friends okay so once again one of the one of the most important skills of a project manager that he needs to know how to build up his team is how to choose his members and an example here is going to clarify so we have a construction project we have a construction project we have two project managers project number project manager number 1 he brought a civil engineer an architect okay he brought an mep mechanical electrical and plumbing engineer he brought a foreman foreman is a supervisor it's like a supervisor mason is a person who is doing the masonry masonry at the blocks a person who is work i mean making the blocks we call him as a mason okay, so we have mason and then we have laborers okay, so uh, the first project manager he has brought a diver diver means different different uh, what you call different fields the second one he has brought all of them to be civil engineers whom do you think their project is going to be successful the first one second one Now, of course it goes to the first one okay although that both of them are civil engineers for example but the first one has brought uh, the people according to the requirement of the project if the project requires different nature of engineers then i should bring them are we clear once again team building it is not about friendship it's not about your specialization it is about what you require exactly is it clear for team building are we clear for team building Okay. Second one is communication. Do you remember? Do you remember when I have told you? Or oh, let us before going to the, I think that they have told you. Let's say that we have once again a construction project. You have two project managers. Okay, you have two project managers. You have Shai. a person who is shy you have a person who is computer illiterate what is the meaning of illiterate what is the meaning of literacy illiterate computer illiterate means a person who does not know how to use computer okay computer illiterate means a person who does not know how to use computers and then messy Messi is the person who does not know how to organize things. So a person who is shy, computer illiterate, and then Messi. And on the other hand, you have a person who is confident, linguist. He knows how to talk in a very good language. Linguist is from language. And then computer literate means he knows how to use computer. Literacy is knowledge. Okay, literacy means knowledge and education. Computer illiterate. he does not know computer literate means he knows okay and then we have organized which one would you prefer for your project of course the second one because the first one do you think with the first one the project is going to be successful do you think the project will succeed with the first one okay so once again communication communication is a very important point it is like you are talking to a very good person in 
in in structural engineering or civil engineering but he has poor communication he is very good in his knowledge but he cannot deliver it to somebody else that person cannot be a lecturer even if he has all the knowledge in the world but he if he cannot deliver it he cannot be a lecturer do you agree if a person is having a lot of knowledge but he cannot deliver it to somebody else can he be a lecturer can he be a teacher okay so once again communication is a big a big important a big important point okay so of course the project manager should be a person who is having good communication skills in general okay leadership and i think you have mentioned this one one of your colleague has mentioned Uh, what is what is the difference between leader and manager anybody knows what is the difference between a leader and a manager leader and barman no that's not true leader who leads a group manager who manages the process no Now to keep it a bit simple, this picture is going to be representing. Now both of them, both of them are actually managers. Okay, both of them are managers. When I say manager, means he manage anything. It does not mean, uh, it does not mean. For example, if you are, if I'm giving you the task of uh, overlooking two children. Okay, I have two kids. I have asked you to overlook. Overlook means look after them. means you are managing something so you are the manager at that thing okay when i say manager it does not mean he he should be a manager of an oil and gas company okay manager means he is managing something okay so we have a leader and we have a manager leader is a person who will help okay manager is a person who will not okay let's give an example students students of an students of architecture they are having conservation course right anybody who is who is having conservation course anybody here who is having conservation or not yet not yet okay Okay. Okay. So some of you are having the course. Now in conservation they they have been asked by their lecturer they have been asked to go to some kind of forts or castles to go and do a model for that particular area or that particular structure. Okay. Now would you pref- would you prefer two scenarios would you prefer the lecturer going with you and helping you supervising everything or would you prefer that the lecturer is telling you to go yourself as a student 
would you prefer this the lecturer going with you highlighting the required things over there in person or would you prefer the lecturer telling you you need to go and sort it out yourself now of course if the if the lecturer is going with me to that place my work is going to be better if he is not going to be with me then most probably my my work is going to have some mistakes okay so once again leader is a person who is going to join with his colleagues uh, you can see that this particular person is pulling with his team members he is pulling them i mean he is pulling with them the rope this person he is ordering them to pull okay once again would you prefer would you prefer to work with a manager who is working day and night with you or would you prefer to work with a manager who is only ordering you to work and he is not working both are managers one manager he is working day and night with you another manager he is just ordering you to work and he is just reading the newspaper each and every day drinking tea and reading the newspaper which one would you prefer the first one now both are managers but the first one who is working with me has reached to the level of leader okay leader is the cream of of a manager okay very few managers are leaders okay are we clear about the concept of leader and manager are we clear about the concept of leader and manager okay so you should be leaders not managers because nobody nobody like managers whom are ordering but at least if i see my manager he is working with me and he is supervising me i will do 100 150% rather than doing 100% so i'm seeing him see he is senior than me he is more experienced than me he has more salary than me but he is working with me okay so once again leaders are uh, leaders are rare condition or rare case of managers okay everyone wish to be uh, having a leader but most of the cases we are having only managers people are ordering to work okay so once again for a project manager he should be a leader rather than a manager because once again if he is the manager he will create for you huge uh, huge complications once again both of them are managers but the leader is the higher step of management where he is providing uh, a better work environment to his to his members planning online learning okay and we have two universities university number 1 they were uh, what you call they were using and they were operating online learning before the pandemic another university who started to use online learning after the pandemic only whom has planned in the correct way i know a lot of you will say that pandemic or covid was something which is unknown but if you see the whole world now from couple of years is already going to the online learning more than more than the traditional learning okay would you would you prefer uh, a college or a university who has been prepared already before the pandemic or would you prefer uh, a place who has waited for the problem to occur and then they need to plan for it would you prefer planning before the problem occurs 
or would you pre- prefer to plan after the problem occurs? Okay, so this is this is a lot into risk management because once again, risk management is about preparing solutions before they I mean before problems occur. Okay, so once again, in Oman, uh, we have a lot of issues in terms of proper planning. Okay, we have two issues mainly, or let us three. I mean, let us say three uh, huge issues in the projects in Oman. We have planning issues, risk issues. And then we have uh, variation. We will come to the topic of variation later. Okay, but we have mainly a problem in terms of planning a risk. If we have a better plan from the beginning, then problems will not reach till whatever we are reaching now. Okay. So once again, pre-planning is better than post-planning. Okay. So once again, uh, a lot of you will wonder, how would you know? How would you know that this will happen or that will happen? Now, of course, for example, if if I'm a person who is working as a project manager, and I have I'm going to do, for example, a construction of a villa, the first thing that I'm going to do is to ask previous people who has done something similar. What are the problems that might occur with you? Okay, we have this particular thing has happened with us. What was the solution in your case? This is a, this is our solution. Did it work? No, it didn't work. Okay, so what did you think then? What did you do? So you need to do. You need to do. Your thing. Okay. So you need to do your homework before you start your your actual project. Okay, and then we have budgeting. Okay, and then we have budgeting. What is the meaning of budgeting? What is the meaning of budgeting? What is the meaning of budgeting? Kindly make sure that your, what you call your mic is off. Because it's cute, I mean, it's creating a lot of disturbance. Yeah. Okay, budgeting means money planning. Okay, budget budgeting means money planning. So if we go and see budgeting here. Okay, we have a UK trip. So we have two persons. We are planning to go to UK. Once again, budgeting is planning for money, okay, or money planning. Okay, so two persons were planning to go to UK. Um, they have estimated, okay, they have estimated that it's going to be fifteen hundred, I and mean, it is going to cost us around one thousand five hundred to one First person, he said five hundred for the tickets. 300 for the hotels, 200 for food, 200 for the tours, 200 for the shopping. And then I have kept 100 Omani real for contingencies, means for emergency kits, okay? Or for emergency scenarios. Okay. The other person, he said, no need to divide. Let us keep it open as 1,500. Which one would you prefer to do? Or which one would you prefer to be? Number one or number two and why? Would you prefer to go with a person who is number one or who is number two and why? Why would you go with the first one? Why would you go for, with the first one?
if you remember we said in that example that your leader is having 20 real for the material whether your leader should purchase or should pay all the 20 reals or whether he should be keeping some emergency amount of money okay so once again if you see if you see in case number one in case number one he has divided like for example 500 for the tickets so when i'm going to go and book for the ticket i know that my limit is 500 so i should not exceed that particular value the person who is having a general value which is 1500 he does not know up to what limit he can go for the ticket he cannot know you know he does not know how much to pay for the hotel eventually what will happen number one the person number one or tourist number one he controlled everything from the beginning so he ensured that the money will not be exceeded whatever money he is having it is going to be sufficient because from the beginning he would choose a hotel which will not exceed 300 he will go to restaurants where he will not pay more than 200 the person who didn't do that budgeting he didn't divide the money properly he will reach to a point that he spends the money or he spent the money in things which are unnecessary so for example rather than 500 he has chosen tickets which are 800 he went for a, a business class he forgot that there are a lot of things which needs to be paid or paid for so once again whenever, whenever you are going to have a plan things are going to be easier it is something like going to the shop going to the great grocery shop so okay if i have if i have a list showing me for example i need to go and purchase bananas i need to go and purchase apples and i need to purchase things one two three four five then whenever i'm going to go to the grocery shop i'm going to purchase these and i know that my money is going to be sufficient the person who will go without a plan he will go and purchase the whole grocery shop okay and he will see that at the end he paid more than necessary are we okay is it clear okay motivation and influencer What is what is the difference between motivation and influencing, or are they the same? What is the difference between motivation and influencing, or are they the same? Anybody? Uh, motivation, I guess it is the positive uh, telling thing which he tell the members of the team. And mm -hmm. influence, he do uh, the thing by his own and the people see what he do and they try to be like him. Okay. Thank you. Almost, yeah, almost. Any other person? Now, if you are, what you call? If you are seeing a, if you are seeing a person who is doing the correct thing. Okay. If you are seeing a person who is studying very hard and he is doing well in his courses, you will motivate him or you will influence him to change. A person who is studying, who is getting very high grade, are you going to motivate him? Or are you going to influence him to change? Motivate him. Okay, so, so in short, in short, 
if a person is going in the right direction and you want him to continue in the same direction then you should motivate him if a person you are saying him that he is going away from the correct direction then you try to influence him so he will return back to to the correct direction okay so motivating means being in the same direction influencing means there are different directions and you need to have one person coming to another direction are we clear about motivation and influencing do you think these are important in your project whether it's a, whether it's a college project or a construction project is it really important that the leader is going to what you call Uh, keep encouraging you keep motivating you does he needs to work very hard so he will influence the others to work as well okay so you can see these are very important things uh, if the if if the what you call if the leader is not motivating the others if you are saying that he is not influencing those who are not working then the whole group has failed once again if the leader has failed others are going to fail as well now we have two teachers here we have two lecturers okay um, one is a student grade i mean one topic is a student grade uh, teacher number one has written a plus and then another one he has written a plus plus i mean a plus and he written excellent for the student Now both of them are a plus but you can see the effect of the second person is going to be sticking to the student for a long time do you agree with me okay both of them are the same grade so once again some motivation I mean, some motivational talks or some motivational words are not going to be leaving easily. Okay, this is the meaning of motivation. Both of them are going in the same direction, but one has motivated the student more than the other one. Students influence. We have two lecturers. Lecturer number one. he puts the average students in separate groups and he puts the smart students in another group second lecture he mix up the students so the average student is going to learn from the good student and the good student is going to improve as well would you would you be sitting with the with the first one or the second one now here a lot of one uh, a lot of a lot of you are going to argue if i'm smart why would i mix up with the average student okay and this is like i have a personal uh, what you call Uh, I have a personal opinion myself and since I used to teach what you call I used to give a lot of a lot of tutorial classes before even graduating from the college while being a student in the college I was with the same I mean I was a student in the same college as you yes, so I used to give a lot of a lot of tutorial classes okay, even before graduating even for 40 students sometimes at a time okay a lot of a lot of other friends they used to think that it is uh, a matter of wasting time why would i waste time rather than going and solving a lot of other questions why would you go and solve the, i mean why would you go and help others now eventually i believe whenever you are teaching anybody else it is like hundred times of revising yourself okay and and if you go out to the education itself if you go to the education level you will see it starts with 
studying. And then it reached to the top level of teaching. So whenever you are teaching a person, you will reach to a point of asking yourself some questions. Why why I have said for him this thing? Why I didn't say for him this thing? Why this is happening here? Why this is not happening here? Okay. So once again, whenever you are mixing up, it does not mean that you are going to lower your level. But it means that you are going to see the things from a different view, from a different perspective that it will open for you uh, a different location that you didn't see. Okay? Are we okay? And see then, I mean, see eventually the person who has spent some time to give a tutorial classes for the students, he returned back to be a lecturer later. So whatever you do for the others, it will return back to you, either in the near future or the far future. Are we clear? Anyhow, are we clear for the points here? Are we clear about students' grade and students' influence, motivation and influence? Okay, so once again, it's very important that you have a person who will, who will support you always. A person who will try to influence you in a way that you are going to improve in the sites or the points where you are not doing your best. Your best. Negotiation. Now, is it is it important to negotiate? Is it important that your leader should know how to negotiate? Do you remember in the example? You remember in the example when we have said um, that the panel can give extra five minutes? Do you remember I have said that the panel can give extra five minutes? It was 20 minutes and then the panel can give extra five minutes. Right? Whom do you think will give, I mean, who will, uh, whom do you think will get the five minutes? The person who knows how to negotiate and talk? Or the person who will, who does not know how to talk, and he does not know how to negotiate. I have told you, for example, that your test number one is going to be, te I mean, is going to be next week. Okay. For example, I have told you that your test number one is going to be next week, and you are having another exam on the same day. Now, if you if you does not know how to negotiate with the thing, you will never you will never be able to convince me to shift my exam. Okay, so a leader should be a good negotiator. He should he should be able to convince the others to accept his opinion. This is very important. Are we okay? Let us see the example. We have two we have two persons, they were trying to purchase a house. The house was was proposed to be to be sold for two thousand two hundred thousand. Okay. So the price of the house is two hundred thousand money real. Okay. Person number one. He said 170. They told him no. He said 180. I mean 175. And they told him no. He said 180. And they agreed. The second person, he has given 200,000 directly. Which one would you prefer? A person who will negotiate and who can take something better than the existing scenario or a person who will have the existing scenario without any change. For example, you are having COVID now and you are supposed to be submitting your assignment next week. Okay. Eight came in the period. If you does not know or if you do not know how to talk with your lecturer and convince him that in Eid 
you are not free and you have other things to do, then he will never give you an extension. But if you know how to talk and how, you, how would you convince him that it's not about studying for 24-7, I have other things to do as well, then he will extend it for you. Okay, so once again, negotiation is a very important point where if you don't have this skill, then you will not be achieving anything. You cannot survive in the field of project management. Last thing is conflict management. What is the meaning of conflict? What is the meaning of conflict management? What is the meaning of conflict management? Conflict, what is the meaning of conflict? Conflict itself? Let, let us say not, not a problem, but let's say it's a misunderstanding, it's a different opinion. So there is, uh, what you call it didn't reach to a problem yet but it's a conflict it's a different different views different opinions uh, a pre issue i mean pre problem before the problem left. okay or disagreement as you have said okay let us have a let us have a scenario and then you will understand as well so we have two project leaders okay we have two project leaders or i mean project leaders in the college Okay, and we have two students. There is a, a female and there is a male. There is a her and there is a he or a his. And there is a presentation they need to present. Okay, there is a presentation in which they need to present at the end of the semester. Now, both of them are arguing. Both of them are arguing that I'm the better speaker, and the other person keeps saying the thing. I'm the better speaker. Okay. The first leader said on the right side, he said, it is not my problem. You need to agree on one who is going to present. Second one, he said, okay, both of you is going to be, I mean, both of you will be presenting a certain part in the presentation. Now, if you were in a group and you were one of the two persons who wanted to speak, would you prefer the person who said, it is not my problem, you need to agree on one? Or would you prefer that you are going to present and the other person is going to present as well? Whom has solved the pro problem? without having any person feeling unjust. Unjust means he is feeling that uh, you, have, you have given the preference to somebody else. Okay. So of course I'll go with the person who has said for me, you can present a part and then the other person will be presenting a part rather than me not presenting anything. Okay. So once again, project leader or project manager, he needs to solve the issue without having both, I mean, without having uh, the parties uh, creating this conflict to be a problem. Okay. So that's the meaning of conflict management. Conflict management means there is a small, let's say, a smaller disagreement which needs to be solved. So we talked about the skills. We talked about the skills which are required for the project manager. And all of them are really important. A person should know how to choose his team. He should be able to communicate. He should be a leader so the others will work with him. He should be a good planner. 
he should know how to plan for money he should be a good motivator a good influencer he should know how to com- negotiate and he should know how to solve issues or disagreements before they come bigger what are the challenges now of course there are a lot of skills he is having but he will be facing a lot of challenges as well it is not something easy to be a leader to see the challenges okay now before going to the challenges as i told you previously a uh, project manager is considered as the top most engineering paid job okay the highest salary an engineer can get in you know, is into uh, project management management i mean being a project manager okay and this is a this is a criteria of salaries according to according to our there are four there are four issues or four challenges normally will be facing any any of the uh, any of the leaders one is temporary in nature okay temporary in nature and let's let's take it as a construction project too, so you will feel or even a course in the college so you'll feel that that uh, that the thing is clear for you okay now do we have let, let us say i work as a site engineer am i going to work for that site for the whole of my life or is it going to be changing if you are working for in construction for example are you going to work only in one site or whenever you finish from one site you jump to the other site change are they going to be all of them for example uh, villas or sometimes you will be having a villa sometimes you will be having a bridge sometimes you will be having a road sometimes you will be having different types of projects sometimes with this team sometimes with that team sometimes with this owner sometimes with that owner now is 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 it is it easy is it easy to have a temporary nature is it easy for you to study different courses with different students with different teachers with different exams or is it easier if it was only one lecture and then always the same students and always the same level of examination which one is easier Okay, so once again, temporary nature is considered to be a, a challenge because you keep on changing each and every time. You are not having the same thing. It's not a typical routine work that you are doing. Okay, today you are having something. Tomorrow you are having another thing. That's a big challenge. So, for example, here uh, I work as a, as a, for example, as a, uh, let's say, a contractor. My first project was a two-story villa. My second project was a twin villa. My third project was a mall. My fourth project is a mosque. You can see here the projects are not the same. Okay. Projects are not the same. Sequence of work is not the same. Team might not, might be not the same. Owners are not the same. Okay. So once again, it's different. I mean, it's difficult for me or it's challenging for me. to adapt with these changing always okay so as a project manager you should know how to adapt with these changes okay and you are being many project managers by adapting to the what you call to how the courses are delivered to you in the college limitation on power okay before going here Now let's say let's say I have told you you have three to four project. I mean three to four members. I mean in the same in the same example that we have said, three to four members, and then you need to or four to five members, and then you have to have a leader. Okay. Now the the topic was to create a tower, right? The the topic was to create the tower in the example that we have said. Once again, we said 
you need to create a group of uh, members. You need to select a leader, and then you need to create a tower, if you remember. Can you change? Can you change from tower to a bridge as a leader? As a leader in the group, can you change from the tower from a tower to a, for example, to a bridge or a house? Why not? If you are a leader, if you are a project manager, why you cannot change? Why you cannot change it? Okay, I'll give you another example. Let's say that I have told you that you have an assignment and this assignment needs to be submitted next week, Thursday. Okay, you have an assignment. This assignment is to be submitted next week, Thursday. Can you submit the Sunday after? After? Can you submit the Sunday after that Thursday? Can you submit whenever you want? Or there is a deadline that you should not exceed? Can you change the deadline yourself? Can you change the assignment yourself? Okay. Why you cannot change it? Because there is somebody who is having more power than you. True that you are a project manager. You are having more power than the other members. But there is somebody who is above you. Okay, There is somebody who is above you. You are doing this project for somebody else. Like in the case of the assignment, you are doing it for the lecturer. So the lecturer is the one who is having the power. The lecturer is the owner in that scenario. Okay, so once again, when I say limitation on power, eventually you don't have the power to change anything you want. True that you are being the project manager, but eventually you don't have the power to change anything. You need to wait for the approval from somebody else if you want to change anything. Okay. So a good example here, you can see that we have a labor. Above the labor, we have a foreman. So the foreman is a person who is managing group of labors. Okay, so you can see that labor is having less power. Foreman is having more power than the labor because he is supervising him. Engineer is having more power than the foreman. Okay. Project manager is having more power than the engineer. And then eventually at the end, the owner is having all the power in the project. So if the owner says for you, no, do not submit Thursday, Submit Sunday, and you will be submitting Sunday only. Okay. So once again, when I talk about when I talk about project manager, true that he is having some power, but he does not have the power to change anything. So you have been asked to manage the whole work, but you don't have the full authority to change anything. Okay. So that's being a challenge as well. Are we okay? Are we fine? Have you understood the meaning of limitation on power? Okay. Different backgrounds. And this is something, I mean, something close to the temporary mission. Uh, when you work in construction project, are you going to work with the, with Omanis only? Or people who are speaking English? or people who are eating the same food that you are eating, or people who have studied the same code that you have, you have studied. Okay, we have, in real things, we have different backgrounds. It might be a male and female. It might be a person from the same nationality, a different nationality. Okay. So when we talk about project manager, he does not have only common people. He has different backgrounds, and he needs to know how to deal with with the different background. Okay. For example, I have 
we have a project manager who is having an architect, labor, civil engineer, mechanical engineer, mason, and then HSC engineer. Eventually, the final decision, the final decision will be coming from the project manager. Okay, the final decision about technical things, let's say, will be coming from the project manager. Let's say that there was a problem in architecture. Okay, there was a problem in how the project or how the structure is looking from outside. Okay. And the architect has proposed a solution for the project manager. Now, can the project manager say, no, I'm not specialized. If he is, for example, a civil engineer, okay, if he is a civil engineer, can he say, no, I don't know anything in architecture you need to decide, you need to decide, or should the project manager decide? Can he say, no, I don't know? You decide as an architect. Or he should go and study. Study whatever proposal and then decide. Okay. So once again, the project manager should be studying. He should be studying whatever has been proposed and then he can give his decision. It's something similar to your courses as well in the college. You're having a civil engineering specialization and architecture specialization, but you are studying, but you are studying courses in business. Okay. You are studying courses in mathematics, science, Okay. So you are dealing with different backgrounds. You cannot say, no, I will not deal with it. Okay. So this is in terms of job. This is in terms of nationalities as well. So you are having different nationality, different culture, different thinking, different specializations. And eventually you need to decide for everything. So that's a big challenge as well. Last thing is client satisfaction or owner satisfaction. Now, is it is it easy to uh, what you call? Uh, is it easy to satisfy somebody? Is it easy, for example, to get an A and satisfy your lecturer? Is it easy or is 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 it always a challenging thing? Is it easy or is it always a challenge for you? It's always, it's always a challenge. It's always a challenge. Okay. It's always a challenge. I'll give you an example and hopefully it will make it a bit clearer for you. Client satisfaction means the client is satisfied. He is happy about whatever he has received. So what we have here, you have done the construction. Okay. You have you have done a construction here. And then regularly when you do a construct when you do construction, you might be seeing some, some cracks, okay, because of the plaster, for example. Okay, because of the because of the plaster. Okay, so once again you can see in the picture here there is a small crack available, which is which is from the blaster. Okay, or because of a small what you call crack in the block. So this was the problem. So a small crack is there. The owner came to you. He said, he said, there are cracks in the wall, so you need to change the wall. Now you have told him that a small crack, we call it as a hairline crack. Okay, so that's a hairline crack. It can go by blastering only. It can be covered up. No need to change the wall. So once again, it's going to be very hard for you to satisfy the client. He will tell you that they have paid a lot of money for this, for this, what you call, 
for this building he does not know that this is a small crack i mean a small crack he knows that you have caused this building to have a crack okay. so once again it is always whatever is the what is what whatever is the area that you are working on it's always going to be hard for you to to satisfy any client always any client wants something which is better okay even if you have done for example uh, you have you have purchased today a phone okay after one month or two months there is another another phone has came it is going to be very hard for you to satisfy the person not to take the other phone it is always a challenge for you to satisfy the client okay and this will be seen whenever you are going to go for or uh, for the construction later okay it is very hard and you can see it now in the courses it is really hard to convince like for example in architecture it's very hard for you to convince the evaluators in design that you deserve the you deserve the mark you have spent 24/7 or day and night to get this particular design and eventually he was not satisfied or she was not satisfied the same thing with with the civil engineering students with their project okay once again it is very hard to satisfy the person who is evaluating your work whether it's construction or college work or any other thing okay doing that we have finished the first chapter which is about introduction of project management and then we have still five more chapters to go hopefully you understood anything from me I'm sorry if i have been a little bit fast I didn't give you time to uh, what you call uh, to talk or to uh, discuss anything if you wanted to discuss. And if you have any question now, you can ask. We have finished today's session.